I'm going to London and you can do a scan to see your brain and yeah. Have you ever worked in the metalworking industry? Do you have any cochlear implants or other kind of ear implants? Mm -hmm. Are you claustrophobic? No. Yeah. Do you wear a hearing aid? No. Yeah. Do you have dentures? No. Yeah. Any dental bridges or braces? No. Yeah. Do you have any tattoos? No. Yeah. Do you have any shrapnel from a wandry or explosion? No. Yeah. Are you diabetic? No. Yeah. Epileptic? No. Yeah. Ever had a seizure? Is there any way you could be pregnant? <laughs> no. No? Okay. I went to my school a normal day and I went to my English class and um, I'm supposed to be, um, it's a, a play and I'm supposed to be reading aloud but I just can't, um, I don't know why. My one arm and leg is like pins and needles and also I feel like I want to be sick. So I went to hospital and after that, I really can't remember, but I had a stroke. So the scan, what is it? It's a machine that uses magnetic waves and radio frequency magnetic fields to take a, a very high resolution photo of your brain. We kind of slice through your brain 176 times. So we take 176 different images and they're going from back to front, from top to bottom and from left to right. Why is it so loud? The magnetic field, it's, it's measured in something called Tesla and, and this machine in particular has three Tesla. It's much, much stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. And it is so loud because the bits that make the machine work, basically, they're being pulled by the magnetic field. So as we're scanning you, they're rattling because they're fighting against the force of the magnetic field. Your brain can be summarized in 176 different <laughs> slices. Now I have aphasia. My reading, my writing, my speech is affected. And now, obviously, I like to read and I can't read now. So that's changed. Are you ready to look at your brain? Yes. yes. Um, so here we have um, three different pictures of your brain. So we have a three-dimensional picture on the computer here. If we compare the left side of the brain here and the right side of the brain, you can see this dark area is where the stroke has, has damaged the tissue. So writing and um, reading is the same um, side or... Um, yes, so for reading, many, many of the areas are the same as for your speaking, but there will also be some areas that will affect your reading more than your speaking. The areas that you've got damaged here, I would expect to affect both your speaking and your reading, although your reading might recover a little faster than your speaking. There are many different pathways for language, and if you damage one, there'll be other pathways that allow you to make a recovery that will allow you to do the things that you, you, you could do before you had the stroke. Yeah. And I'm still at, um, like my, um, my um, parents, I'm still at home now. So I think that's changed, so <laughs> really everything. And we have a few patients um, and who've got similar damage, and I can show you, a, you know, you can compare. Here's somebody, he's sl slightly more damage um, than, than you have got. And what so, is, because it's not speech, and is it different? Um, a different like function? Things, yeah. These patients all have had difficulty speaking as you have in the early years. But then patients after about four years to five years have started to come back into the normal range again. Mm -hmm. So in fact, your stroke's one that we're really hoping will follow that course and that by five years your speech should, should be back in the normal range. I'm supposed to be at uni um, at um, 
biology. So, and I still like biology now. Um, so really, I just want a job that's to do with biology. Just anything that I, I don't know, just anything that I like and, um, yeah.